Hey guys, what's up? It's Sissant here. In my quest to bring Geralt's Manticore armor into the real world thus far, I've covered the upper body, and today we move below the belt, so to speak. Now, The Witcher 3 is a game that visually takes a lot of cues from historical armors and clothing from around the 15th century. So I'm going to make these pants as a set of hose. I'm going to try, as ever, to strike a decent balance between what history shows us and what the game shows us, in order to try and create these hose as they might exist were we to step through the screen. Now, most other Witcher armors that Geralt wears throughout the game have a shared distinctive feature, the cod piece. Even the starting armor that's featured in all of the game's promotional material has one. Until we get to the Manticore armor and... <laughs> so rather than make what looks more like a baggy set of track pants with a velcro patch on the front, I am going to follow the design motif of the other trousers that exist in the game. Because I think they look pretty striking and that's the aesthetic. So my attack plan for these hose, or pants, I'm going to be using terminology pretty loosely here, is to get the shape nailed down then we can take all of the leather parts, combine them with all of the linen parts, and then hopefully have a complete garment. So let's get into it. Okay, so for this part, I'm gonna be following a tutorial that I found by Morgan Donner, which I will link to below. But basically, we're going to be tracing a pattern from a set of pants onto some pattern paper. So the one problem that we're going to run into and what is going to make this take a little bit of doing is the fact that modern pants have a seam on the inside and the outside of the leg, whereas the medieval pants that we want just to have a seam running down the very back of the leg. So we're going to be folding this in such a way that we can trace it onto our pattern paper here, which I will get into and let future voiceover Grant talk you through. After putting down the pattern paper, I needed to get the pants laid out with the two seams basically on top of each other, with the front end of the pants following as straight a line as possible. To help hold them in place while I marked everything out, I just put a few pins through the leg. Flipping the pants over that front line, I then used my awl to poke holes through the U-shaped crotch seam, and I feel it bears mentioning here that I did have a board down to protect the table at this point. So after dutifully connecting my dots, I went and used a sharpie to make the outline a little bit more visible, and added way more seam allowance than is reasonable or necessary, but it felt very safe to me at the time. That extra bar at the top of the pattern I added to make the pants sit more at my natural waist. Now, after I cut it out, I actually made them lock up off camera, so fair warning, the next scene is going to be me in a very revealing pair of calico tights. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you. So I went and did that thing that I made a mock-up off camera. The seams running directly up the back of the leg and then up the middle of each buttock all the way up to the waist, which I've put, as aforementioned, at my natural waist. But you can see I'm able to bend in these, I can walk. What we're going to be doing is putting panels of a lever onto the sides of my thighs here. So yes, yeah, so I've got these two lines that are running down the middle of the thigh. So bottom line, I have a pattern here that I'm fairly happy with. So all that I need to do now is take our pen mark um, get the dimensions of the leather that we need. Then we'll be able to cut each leg of this out of the real linen. Also cut the leather out. We're going to have to sew that leather siding on before actually closing it up. Sewing all of that on once the leg has been closed up at the rear seam is gonna be pretty much impossible. Let's get into it and then you'll be able to see what I'm trying poorly to articulate. Okay, so I folded the hose along the center line and transferred onto some more brown paper before later transferring onto foam. If I made these pants again, I'd just take the measurements for the side panels from that pants pattern that I already had, but ultimately this wound up working, just with some minor confusion along the way. So now after having traced out the pattern for the leather panel that's going to go on the side of the pants, First thing I noticed is that it, the pants are shaped like a leg, a doy grant, which means that it may not just be a simple rectangle. Thus, I've traced around it and marked that this does appear to have a side. Once I cut my prototype piece out of this foam, I'll be able to attach it and see how true that is. This is all kind of experimental at this point, and I am just using flooring foam, which I bought a roll of 
from Bunnings for all of twenty dollar dues. I like using foam as a prototype for leather because it bends and acts the same way. I could almost definitely use fabric to get a reasonable prototype for the leather, but I have the foam, I'm used to working with it, and it's what I like using, so that's as much reason as I need. Let's get this cut out. Okay then, so what we wanted to see was this following the center of my leg and also following the center on the back. I probably don't need for this leg part to be this long. I have quite confidence that if I sew it, it will behave more like this. And that's the nice thing about using a leather side panel. It will actually add some structure to the linen garment in that manner. So I think that what I'm going to do is just bring that out. We'll redefine the middle line as being there because that's kind of where it's sitting. We'll adjust this pattern and then we're ready to cut it all out of leather. So making progress. been here before and for those of you who are new here and haven't been here before the order that we're going to do this in we're going to put some water on this get a little bit of moisture content that will help it to absorb our alcohol based Thieving's Walnut Pro Dye. And then basically, I'm gonna leave these to dry completely overnight. Now, the pieces that I've picked have a couple of shitty inclusions in them. I like that. Honestly, that's just part of the story that it tells. So, let's get these damp. So if you'll excuse how sweaty and gross I am at the moment, I wasn't happy with the dauber on the first one because you can really see the brush strokes, they're very visible. So I decided to do a bit of an experiment, grab a rag and smooth this one out and see how she went. And I think the initial result is a lot better. I have a tendency to try and overcorrect my mistakes and so I'm really fighting the urge to take this piece and rub it over this. So now I'm going to let these dry overnight. Try not to overcorrect on this one too much. We'll see how it looks in the morning. So it is the next morning and the sunny, bright Australian morning has not, it has not brightened my disposition towards what you see before you. So obviously using the cotton dauber was a bad idea. So I'm quite happy with this one. Yeah, I actually really quite like these pit marks and the way that they've picked up the dye. I think that that in particular adds a heap of character to that piece. I don't like how this one has absorbed the dye and I'm really confused because this is exactly the way that I did it for the jerkin and the jerkin went on in a nice smooth coat. So I don't know if it's just because the walnut is a lighter brown. In a nutshell, what I'm going to attempt to do is salvage this. It's possible that I just didn't put enough water in when I did the initial dye last night. So this is an alcohol-based dye and I was actually reading up on this a fair bit last night because I was frustrated with the result. So basically leather is a fibrous medium. This alcohol-based dye wants to have a good penetration to sink into those fibers and spread out and go even, sort of like what we're seeing here. Okay, so the main barrier to the alcohol-based dye getting a good coverage is that the fibers are irregular. This is this is an organic medium. There are going to be discrepancies between one area and another. So what the water does is when the leather absorbs the water, the fibers kind of separate and swell. The water makes them more receptive to getting an even color with the dye. This is all a learning experience for me and I'm taking you guys along with me. So what I'm going to do is put just a little bit more water into these. We'll try and put just a, a, a very thin coat of walnut on there. But yeah, this morning's task is going to be to see if we can salvage any of this. Okay, so it's been a little bit. These aren't completely dry yet, but I'm 
very, very happy with this. And it's lightened up a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. So we're back now. It's quite a bit later, but it took these an incredibly long time to dry. But hopefully you can see that these are a great deal lighter. Even this one is smoother and lighter in tone. So I don't know if putting methylated spirits into it has diluted the dye that was already in situ in the leather. There's still a lot of streaking on this one. So what I'm going to do is put on a final layer of walnut because I want to put a layer of walnut on to darken this just a touch. And um, what I'll do is put some water into it, put some dye into it, leave it to dry overnight and we'll see how it gets on. That's the business. Just in case you haven't seen my two jerkin videos, I don't blame you, there's like nearly an hour of content there. But one of the cool things about the magical armor is the repetition of all of these design motifs. And one of those motifs is this quilted pattern. We see it on the shoulders here and we also see them on the legs. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the squares that I draw on the legs are the same size as these ones. Now, how do we impress that shape on the leather? Wet forming. I've gone on and on about wet forming on this channel, but in case you are new, many avenues of leather working can be understood to be about controlling the level of moisture that is present in the leather. What we do with wet forming, as the name implies, the leather needs to be wet. It needs to be saturated and soaked. Normally with thick leathers, as in the braces video. Wow, I really am working up a back catalog of videos now, aren't I? This is pretty cool. Those were submerged, as was the bandolier in the belts video. Rather than dunk these in water, I'm just going to liberally apply with my rag here, water to the top of it. And this is what we're looking for. When the leather stops absorbing the water, when you can see it pooling on the top, that means that the leather is saturated. It can't accept any more water. It's full, it's like a sponge. So once all of the leather gets sort of used uniformly to that point, we will be able to start marking out our shape with a shaper tool. And I did mark out the shape with the shaper tool. I also made use of some calipers to get the lines on the side as well as various measuring paraphernalia to keep my lines straight and on point. Once the grid was completely marked out, I went over the entire thing with my trusty four millimeter pricking iron to punch all of the holes in both pieces that are gonna be needed to sew these onto the linen. I then sealed both pieces with a liberal application of Neat's Foot Oil, which does give them a lovely finish. Now the other piece of fabric that I'm going to be adding to these hose is the cod piece. And if you possess external genitalia, then that will be somewhat more of a complex shape than just a triangle. So this will end up being the pattern for the cod piece. But anyway, we, we wind up with kind of this weird, uh, well it's not all that weird when you think about it. You wind up with this bulbous centerline tapering down to a point. So just showing that by way of explanation and also sparing you the intimate moments with the tape measure that was spent coming up with some of the measurements there. The next step for me is to get the linen out onto the table. We'll pin this down, we'll cut out some legs and then, God, we're getting very close to having a garment.
I can't tell you how excited I am to have finished all of the hand stitching on this and I also can't tell you how filled with trepidation I am to have to turn this into a tube of fabric that my leg fits in. I'm really worried to put this through the sewing machine. We'll see how slapdash we have to get in the execution, but I'm thrilled that this part is done and that we can move on to the machine part, but however, time alone will tell how that step of the creation process goes. I have joined the two parts together so I have one set of pants rather than two distinct pant. Still fine tuning the seam at the back of it to sort of come in and sit nicely around my waist because I didn't do the mock up properly because, well, I need to make sure I stay on brand. And the fucking crotch seam keeps ripping open because, of course, it does. And so. I have an attack plan. I actually wrote it down because if I leave it up to remembering with my brain, that's not gonna work. Hang on, let me unplug the iron. So I actually wrote my to-do list down because I'm hopelessly scatterbrained and if I don't write it down, it might as well not exist. So need to take in the rear so that it fits around my rear. After that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a few strips of linen and cut on the straight grain. And what I'm going to do with those is to set them as a waistband and sort of like a panel in the front, um, in, in the fly, I guess you still call it a fly. That's just because that's the area that the eyelets are going to be put into for the points to go through. And so those need to have sort of a second layer of fabric just to lend them a little bit of strength. However, I'm just concerned that with the amount that I'm handling the fabric, it's really starting to fray around the edges and I don't know what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is finish all of the seams that I can. When I run out of seams to finish, I will insert that facing lining layer of linen and that will give me more seams that I can finish. And then once all of the seams are finished, it will all be Finished, I guess. <laughs> We're kind of on the home stretch here, and it's just like all of the last little details that I'm trying to adjust. The linen waistband is cut on the straight grain so that the rest of the bias cut hose don't stretch or deform too far out of shape over time through wear. But upon reflection, the leather siding will probably prevent a lot of that anyway. In fact, with the fullness of reflection, the leather siding will probably prevent a lot of the stretch and flexibility that being cut on the bias provides in the first place for these hose, but whatever. I pinned it all down and I ran that top edge through my sewing machine before folding it over and felling down the other end with a whip stitch. When I folded it, I did iron the seams and I had to be very careful with the iron because water and heat are two things that will deform leather. After I was finished with the lining, I made the cod piece out of two layers of the brown linen, which I sewed together inside out. I'll now hand it over to Real Time Grant to explain a little bit more about the construction. Take it away, me. And what I've tried to do while making it is to cut it so that the edge is cut along the straight grain. Because this center seam is so curvy, what that means is that you get the bias along the part where it bulges out, which gives it a lot more flexibility and I think ultimately more strength in that area. So that's what I attempted to do. Time, of course, will tell how well this garment holds up to wear and tear. And all that's left to do now is the most fun part of making anything with multiple layers of flipping it inside out so please join me suddenly you go from this this work in progress to what all of a sudden looks a lot closer to a finished product it's intensely rewarding to me and I hope that it is to you as well because otherwise this is just wasted time and I'm so sorry I ran a line of thread around the outside of the cod piece and then used an awl and some waxed thread to make the eyelet holes on the cod piece and the hose. I kind of went nuts and just put them everywhere.
And there you have it. After much ado, my Witcher pants are finally complete. There are precious few items left to go in the Manticore set, chief among them being the gloves, and then after that just a few accessories and weathering of everything that we've made thus far. If you are new here, then I really hope that you will join us for those future adventures, and if not, then I hope that the algorithm guides you well on your path. Thank you to new and old for joining me on this latest adventure. I hope that you enjoyed it as thoroughly as I did. You guys take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. I mean, the standing desk has been working wonders, but, uh, you know, still got a few squats to do before I catch up to Henry Cavill, I suppose. <laughs>